Okay, welcome to the Bookmap Platform Details webinar. This is Bruce at Bookmap. Risk disclaimer, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss, is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. For more information, you go to bookmap.com. There is a free 14-day trial of the product. Uh, it comes with education. Uh, you get the Bookmap educational course, uh, and you get access to the uh, Bookmap advanced order flow webinars that start in about uh, 25 minutes. All right, there are other resources that come along with it as well. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can reach us at support at bookmap.com. So let's take a look at the Bookmap website here and just quickly go through it. Uh, here's the home page here. Let's click on Explore. Uh, it drops us down into the intro video here that you can see. And then just uh, some various information here about Bookmap, okay, what it is uh, and uh, some of the advantages. Advantages here with uh, NASDAQ uh, Total View. It's not just for futures. Uh, you can also connect Bookmap now to U.S. equities. Okay, you can read about the data feed here. Uh, this is a new feature for the last, um, oh, I don't know, two, three months or so. Uh, it's a great data feed. Uh, here are the other data feeds. You will need a data feed provider uh, to connect Bookmap okay, to the markets. We're just a software platform. Uh, you will need a data provider. So uh, these are the ways that we connect uh, Bookmap. As you can see, some of these are through the API of a uh, trading platform like Ninja Trader, TTX Trader Pro, or Interactive Brokers. Okay, but we are a trading platform just like some of these. Um, so uh, you can connect directly uh, with your data provider like CQG, Rhythmic, Gain Capital, IQ Fee, Transact, uh, or the uh, Dev Experts uh, with that uh, NASDAQ Total View. Okay. All right. Um, Here's the free trial. Uh, you can see it's for 14 days. There's Bookmap Basic or Advanced. Um, the difference between the two uh, are the uh, the add-ons, okay, other features uh, that were built out to enhance the basic version. Uh, so, for example, you can trade right from the Bookmap chart, and this is a, a significant advantage because you have the liquidity map in front of you. This allows you to, um, uh, you know, hide uh, your orders uh, behind high liquidity, for example, or you can front run high liquidity. So you can react to the other players uh, that you see uh, in the auction, right? And that's that's the advantage that you're going to get with the one-click trading. Uh, you can also, uh, uh, you also get access to these proprietary indicators that we put together, okay? Uh, for example, the large lot tracker, this allows you to um, uh, see some of the larger players uh, in the limit order book. Uh, there's some imbalance indicators. Uh, Iceberg detector allows you to see uh, orders that are uh, that trade that weren't in the limit order book. Uh, and then there's a correlation tracker. Okay, if you're a quant, you can reach out to us here. Uh, you're going to want to connect to your own data uh, and uh, have your proprietary indicators as well. Okay. Uh, if you need a data feed. Okay, you can click here, right? So you can get a trial of a data feed as along with your trial of Bookmap. Uh, usually uh, data providers uh, offer a two week trial period. Uh, and if you can't decide which one you want uh, out of the different features here between Bookmap Basic, Advanced, and Quant, you can click here for a complete list. Okay, uh, social media, you can follow us here on Twitter uh, at bookmap underscore pro. Uh, and you can see all sorts of things here. So, for example, look at this uh, nice uh, GIF image uh, showing uh, this um, uh, ignition algo here. Okay, This is an algorithm that is pushing price up, uh, trying to probably get it filled up into maybe this area up here, uh, and uh, skewing the auction. Right? So um, great, great stuff here. Uh, all sorts of uh, other resources and, and things that uh, you can uh, access via uh, following us at Twitter, uh, or uh, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, okay? Uh, if you do, uh, I would recommend uh, watching some of these intro videos if you're new, and then get to some of the features and components to understand the user interface of Bookmap, and then get to these order flow video snippets. These are very concise videos that go through the order flow phenomena that we go through in, in detail 
uh, in the live advanced order flow analysis webinars. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, you know the this webinar here is for everybody. It's open to everybody. Uh, it goes over the features and components of Bookmap and the basics of order flow uh, and what you're looking at in Bookmap. The uh, advanced um, uh, webinar goes through more of this kind of content here of understanding how to trade using Bookmap by what uh, a Bookmap is showing you and uh, uh, how to react uh, uh, to it and understand this phenomena. Okay, we'll go through a little bit of that today. Okay, let's take a look at Bookmap. Um, we've been looking at the NASDAQ for several weeks now because uh, S&P really hasn't been moving, although it's been moving a little bit lately, um, but usually we, we cover that S&P. Uh, we can see the bullish activity uh, today, no question about it, uh, and um, we found buyers. So uh, just looking at the bigger picture here, because uh, it's always important to get that uh, across. We're up at all-time highs again today, so uh, we can see the uh, uh, you know pretty significant uh, move to the upside here. All right, we're going to see some pretty interesting stuff in Bookmap. Okay, so uh, let's take a look. All right. So here is Bookmap, and uh, when you look at this, uh, especially for those of you who are new here, uh, uh, you're gonna, you're probably gonna think this is like nothing I've ever seen, uh, and it looks very foreign and complex. It's actually the opposite. It's very simple data, uh, and it, it, we're giving you a very transparent, uh, objective view of the market. Okay, more more objective than. Uh, are looking at volume bars or candlesticks, uh, etc. Uh, whatever kind of bar, rotation, point and figure, footprint chart. I mean, they're still they're, they're aggregating data, uh, and um, uh, Bookmap is not. Okay, it's showing everything, uh, and that's one of the advantages you're going to get using Bookmap. So uh, I'll I'll get into what I mean here, and let's just bring down this dot size for a moment here. It's a little too big. Okay, so what we're showing uh, in Bookmap uh, is really three things. Uh, we're showing historical best bid and offer. We're showing you the volume where the volume traded on that historical best bid and offer. And we're showing you the uh, historical auction, the uh, limit order book, okay, the dome, but, but recorded onto the chart. And that's what we're looking at. This, we're looking at just those three things. Looking at a beautiful flip of the book here. Uh, this is a phenomena that we uh, uh, go through in detail, um, and uh, I'll I'll, uh, I'll get to it uh, a little bit in about 10 minutes or so. Uh, but um, so those are the three things. All right. So we do have an indicator sub panel here. I'm going to actually close that up and shows the cumulative volume delta, uh, and uh, we have a sub panel here as well for volume. Okay. This is just bar volume uh, based on time. Okay, not showing you exactly where. Um, so anyway, let's. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna take off these layers of data, and we're gonna go through it uh, in uh, in detail to show you exactly what you're looking at in Bookmap. Okay, here is a five minute candlestick chart. All right. So uh, we're all pretty accustomed to this view. Okay, we understand what it is: open, high, low, close of a five minute period. Okay. Uh, the problem here with uh, this um, view is a lack of transparency. Okay, we have no clue where the volume traded. Um, we don't know what size that volume was, and when and where it, exactly, and what type of volume it was. Okay, uh, obviously it's going to be a lot of aggressive buying. Okay, uh, but uh, uh, today, but uh, we, we still have no idea where. Um, this volume traded. Now, even beyond that, um, a lot happened within these five minute periods. Okay, there's all sorts of microstructural detail in here that gives tremendous insight. Okay, it's all lost within this bar because it's, it's uh, aggregated all within one bar. Right, so if I just turn on the historical best bid and offer, we're already going to see a lot more data. Okay, that's all I've shown here. Uh, on this candlestick chart is historical best bid and offer, okay? And, uh, but we can start to see 
all sorts of little ripples here and uh, understanding of, um, of what maybe this wick uh, constitutes here. Okay, we come up here, we kind of go, we, we uh, come back down a little bit, go sideways and then drop down a little bit. And then we come back up and, and uh, break out to new highs again. Okay. Uh, and, um, uh, but we, we really don't have an understanding of that looking at this candlestick chart. Okay. Because it aggregates that data. And that's, uh, that's part of the problem here with this candlestick chart. Now, the other side of that um, problem is the volume, okay, not knowing where the volume traded. So if I turn on the volume dots here, now I know exactly what occurred, okay? So let's zoom into this little area here, okay, up here. All right, so this is what occurred. Uh, and um, uh, we can see uh, between here, between this bar and this bar is five minutes okay well wh what actually occurred here was um, uh, we, we can see that uh, uh, beginning of the bar we broke out to a new high above this swing right here okay and uh, there's a microstructure okay I'm getting a lot of latency here I'm not really sure why um, anyway I can draw in a line here okay this is the swing up here well look at the pullback okay right to it right and then we saw continuation to the upside Okay, starting to see a little, maybe, uh, you know, some sellers starting to come in here, right, in the order flow. We can see them, okay. Uh, let me cover what the uh, the dots are, are are displaying here. Like the, um, if we zoom into this big uh, dot here, okay, I'm going to break apart all those little trades and I'm going to show you every single uh, action or event that took place, okay. Some latency here uh, between um, uh, the best bid and offer, uh and the uh, where that volume traded, all right? So that's why it's off of it. But um, uh, because these these markets trade very quickly, right? And these uh, best bid and offer comes in via different protocol than your trade volume, all right? So um, sometimes there's some latency between the two. Anyway, uh, in this section here, here's a very simplified version of what's going on. Okay, we have historical best offer is the red line. Historical best bid is the green line. Okay. And these dots are transactions on the his historical best bid and offer. A green dot constitutes a market buy. Someone hit the market buy button here. They crossed the spread. They paid up the spread. Uh, and they didn't provide liquidity. They took liquidity. Okay. The uh, liquidity provider was here with these uh, 20 orders or contracts. Okay. Uh, the limit order book is the COB column here, current order book. Right. These are traders lined up here to provide liquidity. They want to sell at these levels. On the bid here, uh, this is where they want to buy at these levels. Okay. Someone hit the market buy button. They took uh, the liquidity that was being provided here on the best offer. Okay. Market sell is the same thing. It's just that uh, they're taking liquidity off of the best bid. Okay. Now, note how uh, these dots here, if we, we can continue to zoom in here, and I can show you every single event. Okay, that looked like it was actually uh, one big trade, so it's not breaking down. Uh, but we can zoom into other little areas, and we can see now that one's one, one event as well. Okay, but... Here, I can show it in a different way. I mean, we, we're zooming in to nanosecond levels, okay? Um, we have the uh, capability of doing that. The uh, complex event processor in Bookmap is able to show you every single event at those levels, okay? Very, very low time frames. Now, as I zoom out, though, note how the, the timeline compresses, Okay. And we're showing all of this data here in just a bigger dot. Okay. That's what's really occurring here uh, is just we're visually, uh, graphically aggregating the data together. Okay. And you'll see as I continue to do that, just it becomes a bigger red dot. Okay. We still have all the trade data here. We can use the data tip tool and hover over here. And it says 108 contracts traded here. We have the date, the time, what was on the bid at this price level and the volume it traded at this price level. Okay, as I zoom in though, we can split apart all of that and we see exactly what occurred, okay? All right, so that's how we're recording the data uh, and that's just the volume part, 
okay? And then note how as I zoom out, we saw both buying and selling in here, so we're giving you the overall shape of that with the pie display, okay? And the pie display is really showing here uh, pretty much 50-50 uh, out of these 241 contracts that traded. Uh, you know, 120 are going to be uh, aggressive buys and 120 would be aggressive sells, more or less. All right. But uh, you can see down here, the majority of it is buying. Okay. Pulling the market up. They're lifting the offer. And we can see that it's very typical in a, in a order flow and a trend. Okay. Noticing more volume trading at higher highs. All right. We see kind of a, a, a change here. Uh, in that uh, that order flow here, more selling starts to come in. Okay, but we're still holding structure here. I mean, the swing is here, so we're still bullish at this point, even at this point down here. All right. Uh, anyway, um, all right. So that's the traded volume. Uh, the um, that's only one side of uh, the information, though. Then most of us are only accessing that data. Uh, to be honest, there's so much more going on here. That gives us tremendous insight of what's going on in the market, and um, uh, but we don't see it here, okay? And that's the historical order book, okay? How do we usually uh, look at the order book? Well, we look at the current order book, okay? And the current order book is your dome, your depth of market, okay? This is the current order book right now, okay? Here's our best bid and offer right here, okay? The dashed red and green lines. This number is the last traded volume. Here's our best bid and offer here in the in the uh, uh, current order book column. Here's our price ladder, uh, and then uh, these are uh, traders that want to sell. They're providing liquidity, and these are buyers at these levels. This is where they want to buy. Okay, these numbers are changing all day long. Okay, they're pulling and adding liquidity in the auction. That's what's going on here. Now the current view of the market is good. Uh, it gives us insight to where areas of high liquidity are we can see up here at uh, 63.82 or on the bid maybe down here at 75 okay so we have that understanding by looking at the current snapshot but when these numbers change then that current snapshot is uh we don't uh or that previous view that we uh we just where we just uh came from we don't have any uh, record of it uh and that's the problem with the dome Okay, because uh, you'll have to remember those areas where there were uh, buyers lined up, how they behaved, what about areas, you know, in front or behind uh, those buyers, were they front running or were they pulling to lower levels, et cetera. Okay, there's all sorts of uh, things to read in the auction, which is very difficult and challenging to do by looking at the dome, okay, the numeric uh, current snapshot. Uh, of uh, uh, of the order book, okay? So where bookmap solves that issue is we record it, okay? And we start here in this window, which is the current market window, okay? And you see how that uh, at, at 78 here, they, they had high liquidity and now they're, they're probably up here at 79, okay? They just pulled and they added up here. And note how uh, uh, this area here is, uh, get gets a little bit brighter. These areas are changing too. These, when the, uh, grayscale changes, uh, it re is reflecting the liquidity in the in the order book, okay? So uh, if there's more liquidity, it's this, these areas are going to get brighter, right? And uh, if they pull, like they just did here, as we can see, well, then uh, it's going to get darker, okay? So that's in this current market window here. Where this really gets interesting is we take this data here and we record it and plot it onto the chart historically. So here they are, right? Here's the story of these traders up at 81 and then at 82. So uh, now we can start to look at a bigger picture, much bigger picture of the auction and how they're behaving or how they previously behaved at these price levels and if they're still interested or not, or if they traded, okay? It, we can answer those questions. I mean, emphatically, we can answer those questions. We know uh, the truth. If Did they stay in the book and did they trade? Well, we can zoom right in there, okay? And um, uh, we can check it out, okay? So did, did these, these areas trade? Absolutely they did, right? Look at the high liquidity, 
Okay, if I hover over here, 194 contracts. Okay, and if I go back here, well, out of those 104 contracts, well, we, you know, they can they continue to. Um, uh, no, we're going to get an iceberg here. That's what's going to happen. Um, well, actually, 302 traded. So now, how is that possible? Right, there's a number here that uh, is being hidden because uh, um, we'll have to. There it is, 108. Right. Okay. So actually, not only did this liquidity trade in here, okay, um, and they stayed in the book with these um, uh, with these contracts, but there's an iceberg order. Uh, actually, it looks like it was waiting ahead of a lot of that liquidity. Okay, because that traded first, um, and uh, so that's how you know, even though we see 194 in the book, 302 contracts traded, okay? So we're looking right at uh, a larger player using an iceberg order getting filled at these areas, okay? It's liquidity that wasn't in the limit order book, but it traded, okay? And that's an iceberg, okay? So they're absorbing here. Larger larger player is absorbing up here at 63.80. That is fact, all right, and we know that these guys at 80 as well, uh, they're interested in being sellers here because they stayed in the book. This is not fake liquidity. They stayed, okay? So we can answer these questions, okay? Now, they then they started to pull, and then they started to add back in as well, okay? And price reacted. It kind of it traded for a little bit, and then it kind of veered away, all right? So it's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, kind of stop or they, they absorbed a lot of the buyers here, we need to find more buyers to trade into these areas here. And we did, you know, the, the buyers came up here and traded into this area. And not, not many, just a volume of one, uh, but uh, still, uh, and then here's another one, volume of one. But the majority of the traders at that point decided not to take these guys on until here, okay? And uh, we see the same story. Okay, a little bit, some of it was filled and uh, it, it remained, and then some of it was pulled as well. And that's why the buyers were able to trade through that area. So now, uh, you know, going through the details of this here, though, uh, gives us a lot of insight. Okay, and this is uh, different than looking at some sort of indicator that has a crossover or some sort of signal that it's overbought or oversold. This is factual data of just knowing where traders, larger traders are, um, uh, can, you know, uh, uh, in the market here. Uh, they have conviction uh, in their trades. They, they have transacted and we know that, right? And that's, that's the big difference here. Uh, so now we understand uh, that, um, uh, you know, there's potential here for uh, maybe uh, some of the buying to uh, exhaust out and the potential for reversal, okay, to find more buyers because buyers, you know, maybe uh, they start to exhaust out here, okay, and that is kind of the case here uh, in this uh, in this instance, okay. We're still bullish, though, because, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're still finding buyers down in some of these areas here. Now we, we make a, a, a double top, though. We don't even come up to the high here. Okay, so just from reading this information here, we're getting tremendous insight. We're going to see also here other areas of high liquidity and them absorbing probably here. So we can see that uh, that's that's starting to kind of slow down the market, okay, up here at that 80 level. Okay, and uh, in fact, uh, that 80 level, it's, a, it's just about to get tested, retested here again right now. Okay, so anyway, this is how we start to begin to analyze the market in the advanced order flow webinars and starting to understand these areas, okay, and starting to understand um, really what's going on, okay, not based off of some sort of, you know, indicator. Uh, we're just looking at real market data here uh, and understanding what's going on in this auction, where traders are, are committed and where they're providing, where they're lined up and showing interest to buy or sell. Okay, so for example, uh, we'll, we'll end it here on this one, but uh, we can see here a uh, phenomenon that we go through all the time, okay, in, in the uh, advanced order flow webinars. This is, this is called a flip of the book, okay. Um, there's high liquidity here, okay, it, at this area around 75, right. 
high liquidity, 139, you know, contracts, well, 109 on one level, 133 at another level, 85 at another level, okay? They wanted to be sellers here, okay? We, we kind of come up here. It looks like they actually pulled a lot of that, but maybe some traded. Some traded, no no question, okay? Uh, but then uh, some of it pulled, and these sellers that were providing high liquidity here are now buyers right on the other side at the same price level exactly, okay? So the order book has flipped, All right? And you can very visually see that. So, um, and we can see that uh, uh, it's bullish, okay? Because it's supporting this area where we broke out from, okay, right here. So one of the strategies that you can uh, employ is looking for pullbacks to these areas to get involved in the market and look for continuation to the upside, okay? This one would have worked out really well. Um, anyway, uh, uh, let me uh, leave you with uh, that, and I want to show you where you can find that um, – Flip of the book, there's a video on it. It's uh, about three minutes long. Okay, it's right here. So go to our YouTube page uh, and um, uh, come down to the order flow video snippets and here's flip of the book. All right, if you wanna read more or find out more about uh, what this phenomenon is. Okay. All right, guys, uh, if you're in the uh, uh, advanced order flow webinars, we'll see you over there. Okay, bye.